But on to our topic for today. Uh, we are talking about HSS connections, really end connections, if you will, and uh, focusing on axial forces, so tension and compression connections at the ends of uh, HSS members. So the uh, main resources for the uh, design provisions that we will be talking about today uh, will be the AISC steel construction manual. Uh, most of this Anything we do use would come from the 14th edition, uh, unless uh, specifically mentioned in, in throughout the, the presentation. There's one spot where the 13th is referenced, and that goes uh, includes the 2010 version of the AISC specification. AISC also produces, obviously, a series of design guides. Design guide number 24 covers uh, specifically covers hollow structural section connections. That includes uh, the connection types we're talking today, and then also like beam end connections and truss connections. But we will be focusing, uh, we will not be focusing on truss connections today. The Steel Tube Institute also has a series of uh, design manuals, currently volumes one through four. Uh, volume one uh, has the section properties and general design information. We take a little bit of uh, from that today, uh, but really the, the uh, workhorse, if you will, of the content and examples that uh, the Steel Tube Institute has put together, and, and this is really just released in the last several months, is Volume 4. And that covers truss and bracing connections, but um, uh, part of the, the truss connections is truss splices, which is one of the things we'll cover here today. And when I refer to truss connections in a general sense, I really mean the joints where there are branches meeting a cord. So, uh, you know, excuse my, my shorthand there, but when I, when I was saying truss connections, I meant those joints of HSS to HSS connections. We will also be looking at base plates. So the uh, design guide number one from AISC has base plates that is obviously geared towards wide flange sections. However, uh, there are a few relatively simple things you, you do to modify that approach. The approaches in this design guide that will, can then be used uh, fairly easily for HSS columns. Design guide number 29 covers vertical bracing connections. So some of what we will talk about when we get to the brace end connections for HSS uh, is covered in this document as well, uh, as well as a lot of other topics. Uh, what I'm focusing on here is the, the limit states or the, the considerations that are specific to hollow structural sections uh, where the vertical bracing connections design guide from AISC will uh, cover the, you know, the beam connections and all of that and, and a little bit more, uh, obviously a lot more in depth uh, in those respects. If you can get a hold of one, and the only place I found that you can get a hold of one of the black manuals, the hollow structural section connections manual from the 90s, uh, is on eBay or, or Amazon or something like that, a used book site. Uh, we do, I do reference this a little bit, but part of what Design Guide 24 from AISC and the series of design manuals from the Steel Tube Institute, uh, really what those are about are updating the information in this black book and um, uh, you know, presenting it in, a, in a, an available format. Uh, SIDEC, which is a European uh, group, has also produced a series of design guides uh, that I believe are available for uh, members through AISC. AISC members can uh, download these. And these have a lot more theoretical and, and practical and construction type uh, recommendations within them. If you do you know, track these down, design guides 1, 3, and 9 cover the, the topics that we will look at uh, here today. So what we're going to, to cover are HSS splices. This will be the first section. Uh, and we'll actually end up taking a break before we get through all of the splices. And then we'll look at brace connections, specifically some uh, requirements related to NT connections and slotted HSS uh, connected to gussets, and then the column bases uh, at the end. So we'll start with HSS splices. Uh, the splices can apply to columns, as shown here on the right, or truss cords. And generally, you can also have uh, you know axial splices in a lot of other situations, but these are the most common areas uh, that we've seen them, and they can be welded or bolted. And what uh, you know I've seen is that typically column splices, as shown on the right, end up being welded 
and trust court splices that we'll look at uh, in a few slides are bolted. That's just the general uh, approach.